Hi, Professor Cameron here, Daytona State College, and today I'm going to talk about job search and related business skills. First of all, finding a career job. It's different than looking for a regular job. You'll want to organize yourself so that you have everything in order, and we'll talk about more about that later. You want to be prepared. You want to take stock of skills that you have and qualities you have and things that you have that will help you get a job. You also want to start working right now on your personal presentation, your appearance, uh, the way you dress, the way your hair is, even sometimes with people, even their smell. Some people that smoke don't realize how much they smell like cigarettes. Also look at job search and networking. We'll also spend time with the interview process. And finally, we'll look at switching jobs. So it's different than a regular job. You don't want to just drop by and say, hey, you know, you got a job open. It's, it's not that style at all. It's a much more formal style. And part of the job process is seeing you have the right character, attitude, and uh, manners, even personal manners. You'll want to do your homework. You want to do research and find out about uh, the type of companies you're interested in. You'll also want to do research on yourself so you can prepare materials to help present yourself. You'll want to know the business you're applying for. Now, obviously, you're not going to know business secrets, but you'll want to be familiar with the business. That will really impress them that you're interested. And you should be. You're going to spend a lot of your life at the company. So knowing the kind of engineering or kind of accounting or whatever the business is, you'll want to know that. So you can start researching it. And with the Internet, there's really no reason not to know a lot of the basics. It's very helpful if you can find somebody at the company that you know that you can use it as a contact or even provide an introduction for you. You also want to project to other people that you're a stable person. You want to project stability. That, uh, you know, they're not going to hire a problem or, you know, with chaotic problems. So again, something you can start working on now. And the other thing is that sometimes searching seems fruitless. But uh, just like uh, Thomas Edison, you know, he had to try so many light bulbs that didn't work for you, found one that did. Searching is your new job. So your goal is to find a job, and that is, that is the payoff. And uh, it is worth the time. And the time can vary a lot. So just remember, that's your new job. Don't think I don't have a job. So every day, you should be working towards acquiring a job. Getting organized. Again, personal chaos is something that's very hard for a company to deal with. So if you uh, have a tendency to have sick kids, broken down cars, things like that, do what you can to uh, still be able to present a good face. People are hiring you for your skills. They're not adopting your family, and problems aren't a reason not to come to work. And I know sometimes it exceeds what is humanly possible, like obviously if you're too sick to work. But you want to make uh, whatever arrangements you can and start reining in this personal chaos and uh, kind of build your character and things like that. Transportation. Absolutely must have reliable transportation. Doesn't matter if you ride the bus. Doesn't matter if you can walk, ride a bike, ride a scooter, take a helicopter. You just have to make sure that it is reliable and you have plans A, B, and C. So if your car doesn't work, that doesn't mean you just don't go to work. You go to plan B and then maybe even plan C. Your appearance. You don't want to just wear whatever's in your closet. A lot of people, I've seen a lot of people use that excuse. Uh, 
they're almost unemployable. Just because you happen to have some trendy clothes in the closet doesn't mean that's what you wear to work. Uh, hair, uh, appearance, uh, hygiene, maybe you worked a blue collar job and it didn't really matter. You can start observing professionals to see kind of how they dress and look. You don't have to have an expensive suit, but you want to start working towards that. Timing is everything in business. You want to be on time, have the correct things, uh, offer the correct things. So timing is everything. So learn to organize your time. You don't have to have a schedule for every minute of the day. What I found is once I organize my time, I actually organize my off time and I don't end up having spillover work. I work very hard when I work and I also get to play very enjoyably when I play. You want to create a plan of how you're going to go about this. This is like any major project and it's a very important project in your life. So it's worth creating a plan, making notes, going through the process. So, talked about preparation. You may have to make changes. Some people aren't comfortable with this. They're often very small changes. If you make changes, you are not a sellout. You are going into a business mode. Business mode is multi-ethnic. It is not any particular way to do things. And it doesn't mean when you get home, you can't act and talk like people in your neighborhood. So make changes. Some of the changes might be in uh, the chaos or it might be in your appearance. Again, if you like to go to clubs or play video games, you can wear that when you're doing that. When you're at work, you dress something else. That doesn't mean you have to dress that way everywhere you go. But be willing to make changes. If you're not, you might find a unique business that's more of a beanbag and hippie type business. Um, but it's a lot easier to find a job if you just make some minor changes. Clothing, kind of mentioned that already. Make sure your clothing is suitable. You'll notice the people in the picture have different types of clothing on. So whatever clothing is suitable at places you're interviewing at, maybe that's critical to you. You want to wear a golf shirt or you don't want to wear a suit or you do. Then uh, kind of keep that in mind when you're checking out businesses. Hair goes without saying should be neat and clean. Um, again, you can observe that uh, at the business. And again, I talked about observing other professionals. That is a great way to get tips on maybe how you look. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, I have to get a haircut and spend forty dollars, and I've got to buy all these clothes, a couple hundred bucks. No, you don't. No, you don't. You can go to a place and have your haircut very inexpensively, or uh, maybe do it yourself or have a, a friend do it. You can also um, go to thrift shops for clothes. So there's really no reason to. In fact, I um, went to thrift shops for clothes. I've done that several times in the past. Uh, really helped me get going when I didn't have a lot of money. And you find a lot of good quality pre-owned clothes at, at thrift shops. Now you're thinking, what are the prices? Well, some places I've been have been a couple of dollars per article to maybe $5. Uh, sometimes you get a whole bag of clothes or blowing them out for a few dollars and take some home that don't quite fit then you just you just need a few sets to get going another thing you can do to prepare is to hang out with successful people so tr try to spend time around people like that whether they're at your church and you don't normally associate with them maybe talk to some of them or at other organizations or social organizations and uh, maybe ask them a few questions. You know, say you're looking to get a professional job and do they have any pointers or anything like that. You might even be able to pick up a contact if they know you uh, fairly well or even maybe an inter um, uh, introduction. But hang out with successful people. You want to visualize and start doing what you want to become. Think about being a professional and you will become a professional that doesn't mean in your everyday life that just means that you can fit into that environment very easily so you want to start thinking about it uh, as you get time 
and it is a training thing. You know, people don't train for a week and then go to the Olympics. I've mentioned that before. So uh, just start thinking about it and becoming that now. Kind of look at places you visit, businesses, and see how people look and how they act. And uh, maybe you can incorporate that. Personal presentation. These are things like how you act and your manners and how you speak. Now, you, you might not be able to lose an accent right away, and it doesn't, doesn't really uh, affect a lot of people. Most people are not offended about that. In fact, hardly any. But you want to start working on that, too. You know, how do they react? Some people, if something goes a little bit off kilter, they act with yelling and screaming and obscenities. Obscenities normally aren't uh, allowable at work. There's other ways to work around a problem. Job search activities. Believe it or not, opportunity is everywhere. You have to go out and find it. Um, you might not find it on the first day. It might be something pops up. Uh, I've had a couple of jobs that weren't even advertised. I just came across it by uh, looking around and asking around for people. And uh, be because I had kind of created a network, people, some people knew me a little bit. Now, it wasn't just because I knew somebody I got a job. I had to have the qualifications. I happened to be looking. If I was sitting at home watching cable, they would have never called me. I would have never got, I wouldn't even have got this job. I had to go out and find it. So go out there and look. Uh, it's just like people. There's people that you may want to date and other people you don't. But there's a lot of people you may not may not be a good fit just like jobs so the opportunities are out there and you have to have perseverance opportunity won't chase you down so you will have to go out there uh, meet and intermix with people at businesses social organizations so you will have to take some action you'll want to create a resume and a resume is kind of tooting your own horn. It's showing all your uh, good qualities, uh, some of your experiences, some of your educational experiences. And, and for some people that might not have had an opportunity to work in any environment before, maybe they're young people or previously didn't work, uh, you can emphasize your education. You can emphasize uh, social organizations you've been in, uh, either churches or uh, civic organizations uh, people like to see that you volunteered or you've participated you just didn't sit at home waiting for something to happen uh, if, if you're young you can maybe point to your education and uh, maybe your grades and other organizations when I was young I pointed out that I was in the Scouts and got an Eagle Award and did some community service things now community service wasn't for drunk driving or anything it was it was part of the scouting program and then some other organizations I was in. So even if they're not your same religion, they'll respect the fact that you helped out at your religious organization or in your community. Use the internet for research. There's really no excuse now not to go somewhere and use the internet or if you have it in your home. It's extremely powerful. So you can find out more about companies, about maybe companies that are doing things you're interested in. Um, so basically learn to use the internet for research. I still come across a lot of students that have used it but don't really know how to use it very well. So uh, just, you know, get familiar with that. That will save you a lot of running around. You want to set goals. Finding a job is your new job. So you want to set goals. You want to try to meet those goals. You want short-term goals and long-term goals. Your long-term goal is to get a job in a field you like. Uh, maybe it's in this area. Maybe it doesn't matter. But all those should be part of your goals. You should take action daily. Now, obviously, you might want to take the weekend off, but you might want to work a little bit on the weekend. But there shouldn't be a whole day goes by you just sit and watch cable. You should be taking some kind of action every day. Not just token action, because this is, this is working for yourself. So if you don't do a whole lot, you probably won't get a whole lot out of it.
But if you set goals and get a clear vision of what you want, um, and then something else might come up that you didn't think about, but if you have kind of an idea of what you're looking for, you might realize, wow, I never thought of that, but that might be a really great career for me. Meet with other professionals. This is a great way to understand uh, maybe what they do, some of their experiences, a lot of people would not want to hang out with old people, but people that uh, have experience are extremely valuable. Uh, sometimes, you know, doing it a different way is more important, but you can learn a lot, and it might save you uh, a lot of bother and a lot of trouble and heartache by meeting with other professionals. Again, you can look at their appearance, you can look at uh, who their friends are, and that's another thing. Uh, if your friends are kind of street friends, you know, in and out of jail or in and off drugs, you might have to change friends, and that is extremely hard, and you might feel like a sellout, but if you're hanging around a rough crowd that's on the edge of the law, uh, no matter what you think about the laws, uh, it, it's not going to help your professional career, so you might have to have some new friends. Again, do what you can. We can't all just change our, our uh, situation overnight. Another thing, and I mentioned this a couple times, is you can do a lot of networking or making contact through social organization, churches, volunteer organizations, the YMCA, other things where you might meet people. Um, even if you have a part-time job, sometimes those people know other people. So you just don't know. Um, uh, I, I've been introduced by people that my parents knew. And it wasn't that, oh, that's so-and-so's boy. He's, he's good to go. But still, it was better than somebody off the street that they didn't know any background on. They knew I came from a certain type of family, which, again, is not an entitlement, but that I was basically a responsible young man. And uh, so any kind of contact, anybody that can vouch for you or give you guidance can be extremely valuable. It's hard to just move into a new area and get a job where nobody knows you. It's a little bit uh, disheartening or a little bit disturbing for people trying to hire you, too. Your character turns out to be one of the most important things. And so what these do, the social organizations and the network and people that can vouch for you, that all shows that your character is somewhere in the ballpark of what a professional wants. They don't want somebody that just shows up like... Uh, uh, you know, just appears, you know, like a, so, so they don't want an unknown. Uh, the technical skills often are easier to figure out, but the character and, and the way you operate are a little bit harder to find out. Now, this is another thing, too, and I don't have this anywhere else, so keep this in mind as we go through the interview process after job search, but you want to not just follow up one job start to finish and then maybe not get it and you've spent a month or two months you want to follow up several jobs now if one's not quite to your taste it might be great for a practice interview so that you can run it through it's not your dream job so you won't be maybe as as nervous or concerned and you can practice your interview skills in fact it's good to have several interviews before you get to the one that that might be the most important to you or that maybe you think really counts but definitely don't just get one job lead and just follow it down the path, assuming you'll get it, and then have a big disappointment and you've wasted all that time on one job or you spent all the time just for following up one job. Now, the second part of job search activities is to speak and write using business English and get better at this. Phone skills. When you leave phone messages, hey, it's Chris, give me a call. I would never do that. You want to say, hi, this is Chris Cameron, and I, you know, and then you leave your message, maybe some times to call back, so there's an expected outcome. Also, your incoming message on your cell phone, you should have a local phone number. One out of state doesn't instill a lot of confidence, but 
that aside, your message shouldn't be some kind of uh, hip hop funky thing or uh, something crazy. You know, like I've fallen and I can't get up. Just have a regular message. It can be a little humorous, but just a regular message. You just want to appear regular. You don't want to appear like a wacko. So you might want to change your phone message. Cell phone skills. You want to know when you're looking for a job, when it's a good time to pick up your cell phone and answer it in the middle of something and when it's not. Some people have really poor judgment. They always answer their cell phone. Somehow it's the priority just because it's got a ringer on it. You know, some days I think, maybe I should have a ringer on me so everybody pays me attention. But you don't have to answer it. It doesn't have to be um, on audible. It can be on silent or turned off. So in certain situations, you can say, excuse me, step aside. If you're in a social gathering, answer the phone. You don't just pick it up and start talking at the top of your voice so you can hear it and disturb everybody else. So you want to start learning phone skills. You, know, you see parodies of this uh, on TV, people talking in the movie theaters and stuff. Don't be that person. Practice now. I emphasize this too. The more you practice, the more natural it becomes. And one thing I didn't put anywhere in here, I just realized, is smile. Some people are, have this grim countenance that it's just killing them to do whatever they're doing. Just smile. It's free. And it doesn't have to be a big fake toothy grin, but just, just try to act pleasant. Another great way to find a job is to volunteer or intern. And yes, you're maybe not making any money, but you're gaining valuable experience. You may be rubbing shoulders with potential uh, network uh, or business contacts. And you also can get possibly uh, a references that you showed up, did what you said you would do, uh, get experience in the field. So these are extremely valuable. Um, we have an internship program as part of most of our degrees now. It used to be only for certain uh, like vocational degrees, but uh, I've always felt really strongly about this. And some people, the first thing they say is, well, I'm not getting paid. Well, you're not getting paid to go to school either. But this is uh, a, a place where you can demonstrate your character, your interpersonal skills, your show to work on time skills. Um, and then uh, those can be great references. Sometimes volunteering or interning can lead to a job offer. I, I know uh, some people at the college that volunteered and uh, also have interned and have gotten jobs. References. You want to build some references. There are people that can vouch uh, mostly for your character or for your skills in your area of uh, education. So you want to be looking for references, people that can stand up for you. Okay, before the interview, you want to consider typical questions that the interviewer might ask. Uh, you know, where do you want to be in five years? Uh, why did you want this job? Think about these ahead so you're not caught off guard. They're not going to be where'd you go to high school. Um, there might be, but it's probably going to be more character-based questions. Make sure you have directions to where you're going. Not just the place, but to the room and the person in the office. You should arrive 15 minutes early so you can collect your wits and not be late. Bring your resume in an envelope or a notebook or a portfolio if you have one. Yes, they already have it, but they might ask you for a copy. You want to be prepared. Things not to bring. Don't bring your kids. Don't bring your friends. Don't bring food. I'm sure you can add to that list. Make arrangements. Be prepared. Be a professional. Wait quietly. If you're in a waiting area, wait quietly. No calls or texting. Silence your phone. Just sit quietly. If you're making loud cell phone calls in the waiting room, or even at all, it might be 
enough to knock you out of contention for the job. And the constant texting is just irritating to some people. While you're waiting, you may be under observation. It won't be just the interviewer, but anybody that's seen you. Oh yeah, he interviewed nice, but you should have seen him in the waiting room. He was scratching, he was eating food, he was texting and making phone calls, and he was rude to the receptionist. Not that they're spying on you, but you might be under observation. Be polite to everybody. This should become natural after a while. Pay attention while you're waiting, while you're in the interview, while you're anywhere on their property, but don't snoop. So pay attention what people say. Be polite. Smile. Listen for your name to be called. If you're busy texting and you don't hear it or you got music in your ears, they're not going to be impressed. So be ready when your name is called. Politely stand up and follow the person that called your name. The interview itself. When you go into the interview, greet the other person and introduce yourself if needed. Good morning. Hi, I'm Chris Cameron. Thank you so much for meeting with me, allowing me to meet with you, something like that. But go ahead and greet. Don't just say hi. Just say good morning or maybe good afternoon. Be polite. Shake hands if offered. So if you're being interviewed by a lady and she offers her hand, shake her hand. If it's a man, whatever. Don't crush their hand. Don't prove how strong you are. Just do a gentle, friendly handshake and let go quickly. Don't hold their hand and talk to them like some old people do. That includes you know people I know. This is personal experience. Don't hold on to their hand. It's not church or something like that. You should stand until invited to sit. Don't just find a place and park it. They will, all, they will more than likely gesture to a chair. If for some reason they don't, then just wait a short time and then politely sit somewhere that makes sense. Don't plop down and slouch. Don't just go kaboom. Oh, that's good. You know, just sit politely. Maybe sit towards the front of your chair, lean slightly over, showing interest with your hands in front of you. Use good body language, things I was just talking about. Don't be all reared back or it's okay to cross your legs, but use good body language. Appear alert and interested. Again, use business English. Answer questions politely and thoroughly, but don't get chatty. Try to limit that. They're trying to see if you're a suitable candidate. If they ask about your children, you can say a little bit about it. They probably won't. If you're asked about what salary you'd like, say that that's negotiable. If you've done your homework, you know it's in the ballpark. And remember, it could just be a starting salary. Once you've proven yourself, you may get an increase. At the end, be sure and thank them for taking the time to interview you. They will often say when they're going to get in contact with you with an answer. After the interview is over, send them a thank you email or if you like, send it through the mail. I think some kind of follow up from the interviewee shows goodwill. If you can, get the email address of the person that interviewed you. Often you'll be, uh, you can ask for a card, a business card. After a few weeks have gone by, follow up. Just say, I just wanted to thank you again for the interview. And have you had a chance to make a decision yet? They might be interviewing several other people and it takes time. You may not get an offer. You may get a second interview. This is good because you made the first cut and they're interviewing the final candidates. 
Some people even get three interviews. Again, do the same sort of thing. They, it may be very different. Uh, there may be a panel of people that interview. I've been interviewed by a panel from different areas of the organization. You may get a job offer as opposed to a second interview. If the job offer is from, and you think the company, when you were interviewing with them, remember it's kind of a two-way process. It's like a date. You want to find out if they're suitable for you, but if you weren't comfortable or didn't like the work environment or it just wasn't right, if it's the wrong job for you, just politely decline. Say you really appreciate the offer and all the time they spent, but uh, uh, I think I'm going to go with a different job. Just don't don't say that you thought they were terrible. Your starting salary may be a little lower than you expect. It might be suitable, but you have to be given time to prove yourself. If you do an outstanding job or a good job, salary will probably follow. You may talk to HR right away, Human Resources Department. They have to get a lot of particulars. So be prepared to give them that kind of information that they need. You might have to make decisions on beneficiaries, insurance, and other things. So uh, be prepared to uh, answer those questions or be able to call somebody and do that. You might have to sign documents. Sometimes companies do confidential things and you have to sign a non-disclosure document. Often when you're hired, there's a probation period. Sometimes it's 90 days, sometimes it's six months. This is kind of a trial period to see how you work out and how the company works out for you. You may have limited duties during this time or limited access. Don't worry, it's not just you. This is pretty universal in professional jobs. You may have uh, training that's offered to you. You should take any training and uh, certainly do any required training. And you may have to study outside of school or outside the training. Job consistency. You are needed every day at work. Every day. So you want to attend every day. You want to be consistent. This is maybe different than what you're used to. Always call in if you're not going to come to work. Whether it's sick or something comes up. In addition to that, don't call in during the first six months. That means don't be absent. It doesn't mean don't just be absent and don't call in. Don't miss work during the first six months to the best of your ability. People get sick, that's fine, but do your best. You want to get a good track record of attendance. After that, rarely, rarely miss work. This should go without saying, but don't bring kids or friends to work. If you have a ride, that doesn't mean they can just walk in and chat and talk to you. You go outside and get in the car. They wait outside. If you don't have daycare or your sitter called in, figure it out. Have a plans A, B, and C. Dress well. Dress appropriately, even if you're just stopping by for something. If you're on the job site, you want to be reasonably dressed. You can ask your supervisor beforehand for a personal day, if available, if you have to miss work or you want to miss work for some reason. Ask your supervisor. Personal days are somewhat common in professional jobs. That just means you're taking one day off. It's, it's not as scheduled as a vacation, but it gives you a day off to go to the doctor, get appointments done, go to some special event with your child. But ask your supervisor beforehand. A week if possible, once you get to know them, maybe even a few days if, it, if, if your work is under control. Don't expect to get a day off during a rush time. Changing jobs. Again, 
always show up to work. Just because you're a short timer doesn't mean you can skip and all that. You don't want to mess up your relationship with your employer. Once you understand you've got a new job, give proper notice two to four weeks at the minimum. Two weeks at the minimum, maybe four weeks if possible, so they can obtain and train somebody else. Help them with the transition to show other employees what you do. Remain loyal and pleasant. Don't burn bridges. It can still be part of your network for the future. So your contacts there might get you your next job. I know people that have gotten several jobs from a group of contacts from three or four jobs ago. So don't say, you know, something nasty and or do something nasty. Recommendations. You may be able to get recommendations from your current job that will help you in the future. People that you can use as a reference. This also happens. The day you give notice may be your last day for security reasons. So you're giving two weeks or four weeks notice and it's okay. Sometimes when uh, somebody is leaving or planning to leave, they will, that will be their last day. They'll collect their personal belongings and they'll be uh, uh, done that way. And that's okay. Um, so just be aware that might happen, the nature of the work. And often it's common to have an exit interview and this gives the company feedback. Now, you don't want to vent and burn bridges here. Some of these people might be uh, useful in the future, um, but just in the po point of goodwill, just give them uh, some feedback on things because that, that's about the most honest feedback they can get from an employee because most people are worried about losing their job. So d do your best, but don't get too emotional or bitter about things. But it's very common to have an exit interview. And that is the end of job search. Thanks.